All right, y'all, so we just want to show y'all in real time. This isn't a fake phone. This is my real iPhone. Shit, you see, I just made some money on Shopify. For the, hey, shout out to whoever that was that just bought something, but that's really my, oh, wait, somebody, now, somebody just bought something again in the middle of our conversation. Anyhow, though, we're going to swipe on up. We're going to go to this area right here, right? This is where people messages be at. So we're going to hit, I got 433, man, I get a lot of messages. That's a pen, you know, you could pen Texas. So we're going to click the pen. And those are the initials of the person that we're referring to. Because you know, you know we live in an artificial intelligence age and motherfuckers be like, oh, that ain't that. No, nah. I'm the blue. I'm the, you see the blue, the one that be getting ignored a lot. I'm the blue. May 20th, 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 23rd, 25th. Still no response on my son. But anyway, we'll get to that in a second. But anyhow, I just wanted to literally like open the thread so we can see the actual factuals. You know, nothing's altered. Nothing's made up. This is the real thing. We're going to go a step further. So, bro, when I click this, okay, cool. We didn't show her number because I, I don't want this number out there. But you can see, like, this is the young man that we're referring to. This is the thread between him and the person that I created him with. That's the thread. You know, that's him and his cool little outfits I bought him that he wore for her on their, their Mother's Day photo shoot. Um, you know, hold on, let's, let's hang out a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Just, just more of the most handsome little guy in the world. Hold on, y'all. Check this one out. <laughs> you like your shoes? Oh, you heard the voice too, right? So niggas can't be like, well, that ain't me. That ain't my thread. Oh, that's us. <laughs> no, you don't like them. Um, they cute, boo boy. Look at that. Aw, he's so cute. Daddy got that baby shark. Oh, Daddy got the baby shark. Oh, Daddy don't see the baby. He got a baby shark. That's nice. My gosh. Yes, him do. Yes, got him do got the baby shark. shark. Oh, there you go. Yeah, look at your clothes. Daddy got the boo boy. Oh, wait. Yeah. So, you know, y'all, I, I, I just want to go in briefly, though. These are so cute, Derek, but where the hell, where he going in these? <laughs> they are so cute. He over here fussing. Say thank you, Dad. Okay. But anyhow, y'all, I just want to go on the thread real quick. So, you know, when I pull up these, these handy dandy receipts that we're going to, that, that y'all going to get a close up to, you know, the actualities of this whole thing, it's absolutely our thread. It's absolutely our conversation from A to Z. The no's, the yeses, the go to hell's, all that good stuff. But anyway, I just had to give that quick dis disclaimer and make sure y'all have clarity on everything y'all about to see is 1000% factual, nothing altered, nothing adjusted. This ain't no deep, you know, that deep fake artificial intelligence. Nah, this is the real spill. How you doing? This is your girl Tanisha Nicole. Dr. Harris. <laughs> I, That's Dr. Harris, y'all. Her name is Tanisha. I am a spiritual strategist and I am an emotional advisor. And we have Mr. Grace, aka Lord Grace, in front of us today, y'all. No, no, no. I'm Dominican Poppy. I'm in shape now, uh, so. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. I told okay. you, Lord Grace come back August. I'm Dominican Poppy for the next two months. Two and a half months. Alright, let me get it together. Okay, y'all. Get it together. So, again, I'm Tanisha Nicole, and this is Dominican Poppy. <laughs> so, how are you feeling? How's your mental and your heart space? And why are we here today? I'm gonna use your line. I am, a, I am illuminating in love. I'm illuminating in love, y'all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my heart space is amazing. I am illuminating in love. But seriously though, we here, y'all. Um, I say seriously, but I'm gonna joke this whole time. That's just what I do. But we here because I want to see my son be best. That's why we here. But y'all, I'm I'm currently so I want to say this real quick. I'm, this is one serious part. I'm gonna be serious for two seconds. 
I have been knee deep in a ongoing custody battle. And I don't bring these type of issues to the internet. This ain't even my first time being in one. Like, I've dealt with one before and none of y'all knew about it. I just, I thug it out, I handle my business, and I keep it moving. That's what men do. But anyhow, um, this is the difference between the previous one and this one. I don't give a fuck what y'all call me. Y'all, y'all, I give, y'all, y'all see where I'm at? Y'all see where I sit at? What, my, what the crib look like? How I'm living? Y'all don't exist in my real world. Literally, none of y'all exist, right? I'm going to tell you one way that you get my attention in my real world. Play with my children. And there's this bullshit ass narrative that's circulating the internet. And it's been circulating for months. And I just kept not saying nothing. I let niggas shoot daggers. I let niggas go live and talk shit. I let niggas say whatever they need to say to feed their false ass narratives, to get sales to their groups, to sell their books, to get, to get sympathy and all that bullshit. But we do have to address some things. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to die today, next year, in 30 years, and I have any of my children feeling like they were slighted or I didn't fuck with them the way that I fuck with the other ones. So the point of us having this conversation today is a couple reasons. I'm going to give some game and some resources to any other man on the planet that's dealing with this. The dope shit about this is June is men's mental health month, but most of y'all wouldn't know that because they don't be talking about us or giving a shit about us anyway. Uh, and number three is this again there's a false narrative that I love seven of my children and I don't fuck with a whole one that I purposely made that I purposely waited 14 years to make that I purposely worked on for three years with his mama that even when she couldn't naturally produce I went and purposely spent $21,000 on my own bread for her to go through an IVF process I like purposely 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 did all this shit to create this young man and then when he actually get here I'm gonna be his dad for like four months and then I'm just gonna disappear and say fuck him. Yeah, so we're gonna address that narrative. We're gonna address that narrative with facts. We're gonna address that narrative with truth. Address that narrative with truth. And again, like I said, my son is, he'll be one in September. He's gonna be on YouTube in the next three to four years. So I don't give a fuck what a nigga say. He's gonna be able to type in Grace, because his, his, his name, his family, he's gonna be able to type in the word Grace and this video gonna pop up. But his pops was like speaking on some real shit. So whether he five, whether he 15, 25, 35, 45, this bitch gonna live on YouTube forever. So yeah, we gonna get some clarity. We gonna clear the air with facts, not assumptions, not memes, not none of that shit. I'm big dog, I stand on facts and receipts. So that's why we're here, we gonna address that and I'm gonna make sure that whether I'm here or whether I'm not, my son gonna be able to pull that bitch up and be like, bitch, my daddy fuck with me. My daddy was looking for me. And despite motherfuckers holding me hostage, that nigga still inquired for me every day, sent money for me every month, went and got a team of lawyers and spent thousands of dollars to fight. The nigga had to fight to actually be in my life and my situation for whatever bogus ass reason that my mama wanted to use to justify it. So, yeah, we just here for clarity. And we here because I don't play by my kids. And my daddy ship is one thing, I, again, y'all. Nigga, I don't give a fuck how your mama feel, how your God feel, how any of y'all feel about me personally. But that daddy shit, oh, you're going to get my attention. I'm going to pop my head the fuck up, and I'm going to step on your whole neck and back for playing with me in that daddy category. So that's why we're here. And we're going to help other dads that's going through this shit. Okay, so first I just want to say I do want to salute you for being silent through the process and not allowing your emotions Mm-mm, to get that? the best of you through the process. So can you like bring us back to like the beginning of how all of this took place before Supreme even came into the back. world? <laughs> all right, so anybody that's been following the journey, like I said, I, I only worked three years to create this young man. At a certain point, she came to the realization she couldn't uh, produce naturally. So I was like, fuck it, we both agreed, like, let's go to IVF route. We found an IVF clinic, simple shit. They're gonna do a couple tests, couple appointments. They're gonna send a, send a couple bills for the shop, doctor's appointment, surgeries. Boom, next thing you know, she's pregnant, like January 2020, 2022. I think it's like January 4th or 9th. They plant my boy up in there, it's official. We on go, he's in there cooking. It's time to get the business. A couple months later, and again, this is the personal part, and I only want to make this personal, so I'm not gonna mention, I'm gonna do my best not to even mention nothing about sis personally, 
I'm just on family business and daddy business. So let's fast forward. June comes. She leaves for whatever reason. Y'all know I'm a narcissist and the worst nigga in the world. Even though niggas be trying to move back in every other month. Or niggas. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, y'all know I'm narcissist, man. Nastiest nigga in the world. Uh -huh. So she leaves around June. Uh, once she departs that go round, like, y'all, I'm gonna make something very clear. I ain't no ugly nigga. I ain't no lame ass nigga. I ain't no poor ass nigga. I'm a highly sought after man. So I don't give a fuck if it was one week, one day, or one month. You do not take your throne off because you're compulsive and leave this castle. And then you want to double back in 60 days because you missed the castle and you realize you're moving compulsively. But you're mad now that that man moved on with his fucking life. Like, y'all, life is short. I'm a dope-ass nigga. I don't know how y'all feel about y'all selves, but niggas ain't allowed to dispose of me when they feel like it. And then just be like, oh, I want to play with you again. Be available. Like, no, And I still made myself available a lot. In the midst of that... I went and attempted to create two whole children because every, everybody that followed me and know, y'all know I want 10 children. So when sis removed herself, shit, say less, nigga. We ain't personalizing, we ain't bickering, I ain't sad, we ain't doing no tripping. I'm not a nigga you can hold your nuts on. I'm not a nigga that don't know his value so people are able to handle me any, other, any kind of way and think I'm just gonna sit around and be sad. Like, bitch, I'm him. I'm me. Like, I'm the source. Like, when I tell niggas I'm the source, bitch, I mean it. I mean, like, anything I've ever had in life, I'll recreate that shit the following night, if not the same day. So that's basically what took place. I literally woke up like, okay, you out, say less. Here goes some money, because I want to make sure you're comfortable. I want to make sure you're straight. What? Now go ahead, because I got a question that I want to And I, I ain't sweat, sis, no text, no call. Went on about my fucking life. So she get pregnant. She's six months in. She wake up one day. Oh, I got to choose me. Bye. Choose you. Holla. Went on about my life. Went and attempted to create two children. One work, one didn't. She doubles back in September. And yeah, so go ahead. What you gonna ask if I cut her ass? All right, so you know, ultimately, a lot of people just feel like, again, depending on how the circumstances is, like you're speaking out now. So, you know, some people gonna have their opinions of like, oh, you're bashing her, oh, this, that, that, that. Like in real time. Fuck them niggas you... in their opinion. No, we're we not saying that we care about what they're saying. I'm just oh, giving okay. like a, a yeah, basic no fucks. scenario of like, you know how people are, right? So mm -hmm. I'm just saying like the follow up question that, was follow that I was following up after that is, in real time, what was your specific role that you played that even got things to be to that point that she decided that she want to leave. And like not well, saying- no, listen, I ain't gonna lie. That part, I read on, that shit was June of last year. That shit was a year ago. I'll take some accountability. I'm sure I played a role in that shit somewhere. Do I remember the specific role? Hell no. Nah. But I'm like big dog enough and honest with myself enough to know like I'm not perfect. I'm a terrorist when I want to be. So sis probably got tired of them conditions per her. I'm just speaking for her or not. You probably got tired of them conditions and dip. I'm not tripping. Like, she and I both know. I didn't call her phone one time and be like, turn that car around, girl. Come on. No, you, I ain't a nigga you got to dump three times. You can tell me one time, fuck you. And I'm going to be like, okay. You hungry? I am. I'm going to get some food. I'll see you later. Yeah, I just want to ask a question. Just Because, you know, again, sometimes people, uh, they'll say certain things, but then they won't. They'll feel like they didn't play a certain role or oh, they no. didn't oh, have nothing to do with the overall thing. I am or... light. I am dark just as much as I am light. Okay. I am hell just as much as I am heaven. So, yes, I practice duality. Depending on my timing and how I, and how I fuck with you, you're going to get dark today or you're going to get light. That's any human. Y'all niggas just ain't honest enough. Y'all niggas be functioning from a place of perfection. I'm fucked up just like everybody else. All right. So, after she left... Mm-hmm. And the months went by. And I'm listening. I'm listening to my video. I'm what, on, I want to find something for y'all that I want to play in a second. What were you feeling in between those times before it led up to Supreme's birth? Well, what you mean, what was I feeling? Like, what was you feeling? Like, what was your experience? Like, when she did initially leave, you already stated, like, all right, I ain't chased this. I ain't oh, no. Man, day. listen. You tell I really was. She was in that room upstairs. I could hear her moving, packing shit. Close my door, 
I had an intentional cry for like 15 minutes. It never gave a fuck again after that. I released the sad and emotional aspect that day. And like literally, I'm gonna keep it all the way real. Uh, no, I'm not even gonna keep it that real. But I literally moved on that day. Like niggas ain't got to tell me you a piece of shit and go to hell. And she really do talk to people like that, so I'm not exaggerating. Niggas don't niggas don't have to like look at me and laugh and go, that's why I'm leaving your ass. I'm not one of them niggas you you gonna do that way twice. I'm gonna say, okay. The same way I keep shit player in real life and play on the internet, I keep it player in the crib. I'm gonna say, okay. And then I'm just gonna proceed to be received by like the other like literally hundred thousand women who like would love to be in the same position, who would love to have like a outstanding dad who would love to have a nigga who like inquire about their children who would love to have a nigga that's like oh you leaving well here go ten thousand dollars to make sure that you safe while you out there even though you're leaving these are factuals like i can go back to the zell this is my well, I, was, life. I agree with you on that as being a single mom i definitely agree on that part because a lot of men if you all break up whether you're pregnant they're not really worried about your well-being so i definitely agree with you with that and i, I just got something real quick and y'all to anybody watching this video Drop a one in these comments. Cause y'all remember this. When September came and I put on that cape. Y'all remember I put on that cape and I had went to Georgia? Y'all remember niggas had just up the dip and was popping shit, dragging me all through the internet. I ain't say nothing. Niggas touched my bread. I ain't say nothing. But then then niggas called my phone in September like he's finna be born. I feel like I need support, da da da. And niggas just paused their whole life. You know, cause you was part of this story. Niggas just paused their whole life, went to Georgia. Y'all y'all remember the videos holding the stomach, holding the hand, walking down the street? Y'all remember the videos? Because y'all was, oh, they're so beautiful. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, let niggas throw daggers, let niggas fuck you over, just be the nastiest niggas in the world. But I tell people, like, it's not my job to exact, re exact revenge. So, like, I'm functioning that frequency. When niggas mishandle me, life typically mishandles them. And the cold cut sign that a nigga can't function on the level that they did when they were with you is when shit get real you're always the nigga they call that's how my life work niggas show they ass every time but it's only one nigga out here that buy million dollar cribs it's only one nigga out here that say like oh your whole family need help put all them stranger niggas on my back i don't know none of them but because i love you i love them let's go it's only a couple niggas right so yeah i'm the same nigga that y'all remember in september with holding bellies up in public and doing all that other shit I'm the same nigga that when y'all seen him be born, y'all saw that video when I left out the hospital and was like, oh, we oh we finna grab some Georgia real estate. All right, wait, 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 before you get that far, I got a question before you get to that part. Go ahead. So what actually allowed you to even go and show up the way that you did show up? After, like, you stated that she did this and she did that, like... Well, one, one, uh... One is because, like, I got a real dad, and he a real man, and he just raised me to do, like, real shit. And I had been able to sit back and watch my daddy through example. Like, nobody had ever seen play with my daddy had a decent life after that. Nobody had ever seen play with my daddy reach the heights and the levels that he took niggas to. So, I've just taken on that personality. Like, despite how y'all act, I'm gonna always be me. And y'all gotta deal with y'all reality, because when I'm done being Superman, this is where I come back to. Some of y'all niggas don't know where y'all next meal coming from. Some of y'all niggas at y'all mama's house and some of y'all niggas, y'all, y'all shit really fucked up out here. It's terrible. I ain't even gonna go deep into that because niggas, the niggas that know, you feel me right now because I know your real life because it's in my real phone. But yeah, uh, that's what allows me to show up. And that's my son. So based off my son, certain niggas gonna get leverage and love no matter what just because like you attached to my son. So did you have any internal struggles in that process of showing up in that manner outside of the fact that she was carrying your baby? Yeah, no, it was it was definitely a lot. Like from a man's perspective, because you know like how sometimes men will go through certain things, but because the generational trauma, they're not really vocal about it or they're not really vulnerable to like really express like, nah, I'm in a fucked up place. No, absolutely. And it's like it was fucking a, up every area of my life, but I'm was still a, trying to put the face on. Well, no, I would say this. It was a fucked up place then. It's even more fucked up place now. I just deal and cope with adversity better than most humans. So what would cripple most men? I know how to transmute energy. I'll take it and I'll turn up with it. So, like, most niggas ain't sending no money for no child they can't see. 
we're going to scroll on down. And you know, you, you're more than welcome for the people that's been along for this bullshit ass, bogus ass journey that y'all been seeing on social media from others. You're more than welcome to go to things like Twitter and you can align the dates, right? So let's scroll on down to our single struggling mom with no support. It's early back in February 1st, 2023. What the fuck? But anyway, y'all, it's early back in February 1st, 2023. I paid $4,000. Come on, baby. Most niggas ain't sending no money for a child. And I'll show y'all this too. But the mom goes and purposely changes their government name from the dad's last name to be spiteful. But I'm just still able to show up because I know, like, one, I always win. And two, like, the adversity and the weight. Like, I literally just texted her this probably, like, three weeks ago. I was like, you got a black son. And one day, you may be that grandma who in the position I'm in, that a bitch dragging your son and withholding the child and milking him for his money while talking shit about him publicly but praising him privately, you may be in that position. And such just read that shit like she always doing, kept it moving. So, nah, um, it is a test mentally and emotionally, but... I'm made for this. This is life. I'm cut for the. I'm so cut you could the give bullshit. the men a mental aspect and an emotional aspect as how you dealt with this situation. What would that be? All right, for the men mentally, you are at war, bro. So say you was overseas, you don't have time to get over caught up in your inner emotions or what's taking place back home because you have to stay alive in your temporary home, which is frontline in the war. So that's where I'm at. I'm at war right now. I've been at war mentally. I've been at war financially because my lawyers cost hella money. I'm fighting for a kid that I purposely made, that I purposely paid for, that I still pay for. But mentally, I'm at war. So it's almost like I have a son in Georgia, but I don't. I have to train my mind to like not think about him. I have to train my mind to ignore his existence, even though like I do inquire weekly so he's fresh on my mind at those moments. Every time I send money, voluntarily, he's fresh on my mind in those moments. But I have to, just being real, like, and this might not be the healthiest way, but this is how I cope. And I cope really good. Work, work out, and giving that love and affection and attention to my other seven children. So I almost have to, like, to stop from going crazy, you have to act like he doesn't exist. But to also not lose this war overall, you do have to implement certain actions to make sure that one day he does exist right in front of you, which is, I have to have conversations with my lawyers. I have to turn over certain documents. I have to screenshot shit like this. I have to keep every piece of paper or every paper trail. Making making videos such as these and, and giving a rebuttal and giving a response, like I have to do those things. But at the same time, just a fine line to cut it on and cut it off. So like, to not be sad as fuck around my other kids. I gotta act like there's no supreme. To not be sad as fuck myself or be in a depressive state or be struggling or not be able to work. Like, niggas have no idea what it's like for me to create a whole curriculum on how you can get your family together, but I'm fighting for mine. So you do have to mentally, like, have some level of strength and fortitude to even navigate that shit and not crash out or not want to go kill somebody. Or not put yourself in a predicament where you do too much and then now she can use it against you in court to leverage it and make you look crazy. Because that's what niggas be wishing you would do. So mentally, that's that. You said, what was the other side? Emotionally. Like, what is one thing that you can give men emotionally? So I also want to add, because as you said it, kind of just more so discipline, too. So, like, outside of just giving them, like, one tip that they can utilize as far as the emotional standpoint, also giving them one tip that they can utilize as far as, like, self-discipline from the man's perspective. Like, from how you keep yourself disciplined and with all of this going on because that's literally like a chaotic storm so literally, like just, literally it's gonna be transmuting the energy so when you feel sad when you feel mad like you have to so this is how i do right this is what works for me i align this shit with my goals so like this time apart from your children or your child find things about yourself that can benefit that you can change about yourself that can benefit your child so like i'll tell you a dope part supreme ain't gonna remember because he was a baby baby but Last time he was in my arms, I was 34 pounds heavier. When next time he see me, he gonna be like, bitch, I got a strong dad, I got a big dad, I got a, like my dad looked tough, my dad looked scared, my dad looked physically fit. My dad can run with me outside all fucking day. So for me, I know that's one of the main things I did was uh, transmuting that energy into my workouts and making that my like, my mental vision, like on my mental vision board, like, hey, turn up. 
When you come back, he need, you need to have bigger cribs. You need to be in better shape. You need to have more jewelry. Shit, get a little nigga some more siblings, all that. So that's what emotionally, physically, I take that energy, I harness it, and I just put it into dope shit. Like shit, be a doper version of that previous version that niggas be fake shitting on. And I say fake shitting on because, you know, sister posts certain things. But again, we'll get to that. But it literally takes me like, can I come live with you again? Cause I'm fucked up. Can you help me out? Cause I'm struggling. I want us to be friends again. Like literally it's a message right now. I ain't trying to get back with you or nothing, but I was wondering, can we like, nah. So not only him, but I use that same energy to be like, sis, the version that you fell in love with, I'm way harder. Only difference is you ain't got no access to this one. And two, like on the emotional aspect, when I say just a piggyback on exacting revenge, y'all the greatest revenge is cutting a nigga access. Cussing niggas out don't hurt. It may sting. That shit temporary. Beating a nigga up is temporary. Cut a nigga access. Be a nigga whole world and then check out and cut their access because they don't know how to treat you. And I promise you, they feel that shit more than anything. So like. Niggas can do all that pump faking on the internet, all that flexing. Man, like, again, we gonna get to the screenshots. But I can literally show, like, I hear what you're saying on the internet, but I heard, but according to your, your messages, it hit way harder that I won't let you sit in my house. It hit way harder, because I, I be saying this all the time, like, the last time she was at the crib, I was like, hey, you gotta go. I want an intimate relationship with my son. I don't want one with you. I want an intimate relationship with my son. You gotta leave. Shit, I remember the last time she came, I had a young lady in my crib that she knows of. She like, we got work history, but now we got personal history. And if she really like tried to boss up, like, oh, uh, make her leave so I could talk to you. And I ain't make her leave, I made her leave. You feel me? So like, I could cuss a bitch out. I could be nasty, I could be, well, for what? I'm gonna cut your access, nigga. I know what my lack of presence bring to people's lives. You can look, I ain't got to say a fucking thing. Like, go nigga. Y'all niggas like to go to pages. Go look at the quality of this presentation and the quality of the one you saw two years ago. That shit night and day. Nigga, I'm getting finer. I look 25. I got perfect teeth and long hair that touch my waist. You hear me? Like, I work out three times a day. I'm thinking about getting a house in Las Vegas because one of my baby mamas out there and I, I, I want to make sure I'm stationary next to her too. You feel me? Like, that's where my mind is. I got a video game coming. We talking 30 to 60 million dollars. I am 33 years old. Nigga, my shit only getting greater and straighter, so. Harness that energy, baby. That's one of the main things I do. When niggas leave me for dead, I just resurrect 10 times harder, 10 times smarter, 10 times bigger than I was. And they just have to live with the memories of like, damn, I used to know that nigga. That nigga don't even let me sit in his house now. That nigga don't call me now. Like, again, y'all, I'm gonna go in here and show y'all like, oh, you, you don't even say hey to me. You're gonna make me leave? Yeah, you gotta get the fuck out of this million dollar house. You're not allowed to hang out in those no more. You're doing enemy type shit, so stay outside where the enemy's at, but... Yes, harness the energy, bro. Use that shit to go be a bigger dog. And cut that, bro. Cut the access, my nigga. Stop cussing people out. So stop being mean to niggas. Stop reciprocating negativity. Y'all don't notice I don't ever pop shit on the internet. I don't post memes. I don't do mess. Nigga, we living our best lives. I'm posting workouts, nigga. I'm posting but that was my next question. You feel me? I'm posting results, nigga. I'm posting happy ass children. I'm posting more guns, more cribs. I'm posting more, more curriculums, more packs. I'm extending my legacy. If you compare me to anybody, you ain't got to just use this example. Man, compare me to anybody that spoke ill to me and be like, well, damn, what's your life like in the last 12 months in here? You feel me? Like, nasty, shitty ass niggas don't win all the time. I win. Like, use your common Listen, we're going to use our common sense on this one. Do goofy, trash-ass, lame-ass niggas win their whole existence? No. Bitch, I've been on the winning streak since y'all met me. It's a reason why I'm winning. It's a reason why a lot of them other niggas who be fat-mouthing on the internet is... Niggas be winning on that internet shit because I ain't gonna never meet you there. You can have it. I get. I, I became a $30, $40 millionaire off the internet. Never gonna fuck up the business doing some whole shit and some weird shit. I'm a businessman. But check my stats in real life. I'm him. And it shows. Even when niggas supposedly cut ties, your whole narrative is me. I see it. Man, listen, I ain't gonna lie. I gotta address this one. Niggas is running around in their bio with the one that got away. <laughs> got, a, got away and went where? Got away and did what? You couldn't have got away because my phone say otherwise. 
But you got the way and tried to come back. I ain't, I don't, I, ain't, I don't know y'all. If I got away, I ain't asking you to come live in your house again. If I got away, I ain't saying like, man, let's be friends and we need to do this and that. I, I don't want to just hang hey by a relationship. I want to, I want a better relationship. If I got away, like I'm not, I'm not pulling up on you. I'm not trying to sit in your living room and talk with you. I'm not gonna come in your house asking you, do I need, do you need me to clean up and cook for you? I thought you got away. Why are you mad because she got away? You got, you got to get, you got to get, you got away, bro. You got to get away for real. Why are you mad she got away? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just playing. So okay. Wait, wait. But it's one thing I, I gotta address because you asked like, you I think he's asking like, where did the disconnect come? Yeah, that was, yeah, I, yeah. I did ask where did the disconnect come in at? Yeah, like what initially? Because at one point you guys said got back. Well, we didn't get to that point yet because at one point you guys said got back together. So mm -hmm. I didn't get to that point yet. So I'm. I'm yeah, so I'm, I'm, I got another video. Okay. I'm gonna turn it here, but I'm gonna make sure the cameraman get this too close up so y'all can see it after the fact. So there's this, there's this looming narrative that, is son, I gotta address this one for you, my boy. Fuck these people. There's this narrative that I went off on some willy nilly ass adventure. I cheated on your mom and I went and had a baby. You got a beautiful little sister named Mega that you gonna meet. You feel me? You got, bro, you got a bunch of dope ass siblings that you're gonna meet. You know, your, your, your people's in the way of that, of you being with me, which of course gets in the way of you being with them. But bro, you got some dope ass, wise ass, beautiful, ahead of their time sisters and a big brother that you'll soon meet. But anyhow, there's this falsified narrative that daddy went out and schemed and had a whole baby. And again, see your daddy run this thing called DGTV, right? And with DGTV, I record everything. People have to sign these things called, you're gonna learn about this when you get older, they gotta sign this thing called the NDA. So the NDA says that when you around me, you liable to be recorded and you give permission to be recorded. So yeah, bro, you get a close up on this one, bro? Because if I'm not mistaken, this bullshit ass, bogus ass narrative started in March or April when I first posted Tip having a baby. And the narrative was, I ain't know he had no baby. I ain't know shit about that. What did they say, bro? You, you can say it out loud for me, camera. For the, 222 in the building, cameraman right here. What did they say, bro? November 16th, 2022. Oh shit, I think that's six, seven months before that bogus ass tweet came out. Let's listen. <laughs> Anybody that's been following, sis, y'all know this apartment. And there goes Little Supreme as a little one, half, month and a half old baby. And there goes me. You can see my belly right there when I was fat. And you can see my red shorts. The play button at. What's up? Oh, it's muted. Oh, it's muted. Hold on. Hurts her out. When they come out, they actually do have a new son. Let's pause. When they come out, that you do have, you do have a new son. So anyway, Tip had Mega in March. Initially, we thought it was a boy. So here's y'all folks. You know, the one that said, I got caught off guard. I didn't know he had no baby. And in Maury, vo Maury voice, the lie detector and the footage determined that was a lie. Alright, so. I mean, bro, we ain't gotta say no names, cause you know what we talking about, but I don't know, unless sis got a twin or a doppelganger or a clone, I think this is the same person. I was like, he had a baby on me, I ain't know nothing about it. But she's holding our son while asking me, so what you gonna do when this come out? If we gonna be all the way real, we was actually gonna leverage that moment as a market employee. Some of y'all gonna remember this. Y'all remember we was telling people to sign up to DGTV cause we was gonna hold court? This was gonna be the whole premise behind that leveraging the whole baby thing so maybe sis hit her head in january maybe she fell down some steps you know they do say baby brain is a real thing maybe she had baby brain after that and totally forgot that she has discussed this child with me like 10 times but then she then took to the internet to like tarnish my character again with bullshit because again this is the same human asking So y'all know she knew November 16th. Maybe she, maybe you know, she, niggas be having busy lives. Maybe she really did genuinely forget by March that we had already talked about this. 
55,000 times. But anyhow, I just wanted to bring the close up to show that as well. So that's where the disconnect came in, supposedly. Um, because they had a baby on the way that she was made aware of in November. Well, at least I say this, that's the internet disconnect. The real disconnect, shit, if you in a safe haven, y'all guess as good as mine, y'all go ask me. Shit, I don't know. Cause it ain't one text message in here that say, you a fucked up dad. It ain't one text, text message in here that say, you a danger to our son, you a danger to our family, any of that. But anyway, I did need to clarify that. Son, if niggas ever whisper, oh man, you ain't got no family cause your daddy went out. Proof is in the pudding, my boy. That shit was known six months prior. Yo mama decided to relieve the situation like early February. But again, you're literally in her hands while she's asking me, dang, so what you gonna do about this new baby you having? What you gonna say? What you gonna tell people? And y'all heard the fuck I said. Nothing. I'm having a baby. I already got 30 of them. We're gonna have 35. Simple math. 